Hello, I'm Sheena Douglas and I'd like to introduce you to the brand new wonderful Spectrum Noir Aqua Tints and as you see there's the clue this is one that I have in front of me right now this is the perfectly primary set but it could be one of six and I'm going to give you a little sneaky peek of the other six depending on which one you, you purchased so you can have a look and see what they actually look like and because um, I'm sure if you get one set you're going to want others and um, so what we'll do is we'll just talk about what you're going to get in the box and how I like to work with them and set them out and um, and play nicely so what I've done first of all is I have placed the uh, bottles in the palette that comes with them this is a fantastic really really good I would say it's a must because these look these jars are jars of intense highly pigmented watercolour liquid watercolour so you really don't want to um, risk spilling these um, so I think this is a fantastic thing to use the actual um, packaging keep the, keep them in the packaging all the time because then it's kind of spills spill proof you can also use the packaging as a palette but I would rather use another palette and make sure that my paints are, st are steady in this and what I've also done is I've taken the tops off all the tops are just screw on tops like this and um, they're really tight good seals so make sure when you put them back on there you really give them you'll find they'll tighten and then give them another turn and you'll feel they kind of do a little kind of lock in there and then you know that they're, they're sealed um, for liquids so what I've done is I have placed, this is the primary set, and there's warm and cool colours in this set. Now if you look at Leanne's um, tutorials on the Spectrum Noir pens, you'll have an understanding of what I mean by a warm and cool colour. Um, reds, yellows, oranges, all warm at the back here. And I've placed the greens and the blues and purples would have gone there at the front if there was any purples. So just for use, um, I'll be used to, to knowing where to go to and, and to play with them. Right, they're ready to go. The other things you're going to get in your set is you're going to get a set of three brushes. Now I like to use these brushes as, um, as more effect brushes. They're very soft bristle brush so they pick up a lot of liquid which is great for dropping into maybe your wet canvas and you'll see that the, the, the paints will wick and they'll move over the surface rather than for detailed painting. I still like my um, other um, Spectrum Noir brushes or any other just watercolour synthetic and natural anything like that's going to work with these and um, the water base so it's easy clean up there's no order and um, so it's all good but these are the brushes you get with them you're also going to get and these are fantastic these will be your friend this is the best way of getting the paints out of the of the little jars you get a pipette for each color so literally all you do is squeeze the pipette and then let it wick the color up and now you've got that controlled way you see it's not even dropping yet until I tell it to of transferring the colour from your jar to your palette or your canvas or whatever you want to to add it to if you're going to mix yourself some um, colours in your gessos because you can do all that so much you can do with these but that's that's pretty much what I like to do to get ready if I'm working on a set of course if you've got more than one set you just mix and match pick out the colours you're going to work on and then place them in that palette then you've got the colours you're going to work on you don't have to stick to primary with primary or the pastels with the pastels they're all going to mix and match and, um, and play nicely together and in fact once you build up more than one set I would more than likely store them so that I've got all the blues together whether they're in the pastels or the primaries or the bright and beautiful set and um, all the reds together so that I can literally just go to them and I've got kind of my spectrum of colours um, and I can just work through them um, right the other thing I would strongly strongly suggest you do is make yourself a little palette when you first get your paints this be, this is because on the packaging you know the restrictions with printing is really um, you know you're restricted with the printing process so reproducing perfect colors is tricky and obviously seeing them in the bottles isn't that great so what I've done is I've made myself a little flip chart here um, of the colors I've, I've got so this happens to be my perfectly primary and I've also if you look I've numbered the bottle tops just for quick reference as well as looking across the bottles I can look at the tops and I can look on there and go oh I like this colour I think I shall use this it's number two and I know exactly what that number looks like because looking at the bottle not really that much of a clue 
so that's a that's a big tip I would say to do. Um, I may as well at this point show you some of the colours, seeing as we've got the palette, the, the little um, the book out here ready. So we'll start at the front, and I'll show you that if you haven't, you know, making your mind up on me twenty one. This is the bright and beautiful set. And again, I've numbered it so that I can see exactly which colours I want to use. And this is just one layer, by the way. This isn't dried and then gone over with and gone over with. This is, as you see them, you can see how intense these are. But wait until you see what they do when I show you the techniques booklet. Okay, the next one we'll look at. Now look at the contrast. Pastels. If you're brand new to colouring, if you like um, a lot of soft, delicate colours, if you colour things for maybe um, you know little girls' rooms, baby cards, ba you know that kind of, you like the whitewash pastel look. This is a great set to start with because the colours, even though they're pastel, they're still very obvious. You can clearly see from the lemon to that violet colour. Really, really gorgeous colours there. So very opposite to the one we've just seen. Then another fantastic set, the landscape. This is um, it's kind of well, it, it's kind of self-explanatory. If you like to, um, you know, go out there and look like you're, you're actually using these for, it's not just for card making. Obviously, these are for wall art. They're for 3D projects. If you like to paint landscapes, you've got all the colours, which I would think of a British landscape here. If you live somewhere hot, then you're going to want to change this. And I'm not jealous. So you can see all those gorgeous, more muted tones there. Then again, um, the primary that we just looked at, this is the set I'm working with at the minute. All the, uh, primary obviously because we've got your orange, um, sorry, your yellow, your red and your blue. So that's a really good sensible set. But if you want to talk just gorgeous and throw scents out the window, wow, I love this one, the beautifully grunge. I'm predicting this one's going to be a very popular set. As you can see, really good fashion colours in here. Um, really work nicely together. And then there's the essential set. Now I've only got four swatches here, even though there's six in that set, because the black and the white doubled up, because you find with any paints, those are the ones that you probably need to replace more often. Um, and then you've got an amazing metallic silver and a metallic gold, which you're going to mix with the other paints to make them look like special effects paints and um, like you know they've got mica and, and pearly wonderful things going on so that's the palette and um, let's do a quick little painting and um, swatch and you can see how they work so what I've got is a piece of um, watercolour card a nice heavyweight card because obviously you're going to apply quite a lot of liquid at some point for different effects so we're good this is you know 300 GSM weight would be a great card um, something like the Sheena Stampin card also wonderful so I'm going to show you how to, it looks it looks on a, um, a dry piece of card and then we'll look even just something simple like wetting the card first so I like to use a flat brush if I'm creating a background and the bigger the brush the better uh, to be honest for if you want a seamless kind of blend so a flat brush large brush these are the paint fusion brushes and um, so let's let's try the bigger one. Wet your brush, then get rid of the moisture because I just want, I don't want to dilute these colours. Of course you can, and you can use your dropper to do that if I wanted to make these. And you can make yourself little recipe books. Say I really like this pink, but I want a pastel pink. I might say, oh, 50-50 is a great mix. So just all you do is just measure on your thing, on your pipette, to a certain measure, um, one of each. So there's so, so much to do with these. So we'll take the brush and we're going to start maybe with a darker colour at the bottom here and just wash over and you can see how intense that is. Really nice, just don't be scared, just wipe that straight over there. Now I'm going to wet the brush, dry that off and then I'm going to go to the next colour. Pick that up, this should be a lighter orange, there you go, look how intense that is. And then just wipe close to where you've just been and you'll see it'll blend you get a really lovely seamless um, blend with these they're one of the easiest paints for blending that I've found um, lots of crafts even with parchment craft you know this rainbow card and things that was really pop popular for that to, to have be behind parchment and things um, you know you have to buy it but you can make your own now if you see there there's that little line there little transition line all you need to do is pop a little bit of orange in the middle and you'll lose that and then you can blend from one to the other and back and down and you've got a really nice this would be great for like the African stamps and African sunset and within the primary you've got obviously the warm and the cool colours and um, so you can have you know really best of every world really you've got all things covered with that set 
you can see how well that's working so that's that's onto a dry piece of cord and you can see how well that's blended now what you can do is if you use a, a wet piece of cord always have some kitchen paper handy by the way when you're, when you're working with these just keep wiping up and um, you'll find you, you'll, you'll want to have quite a bit of that um, at hand if you spritz your cord before you start really get quite a bit of water on there um, and we'll put a line of the darker colour along the bottom now this might be a dark blue or a blue that you've mixed with some of the black from the essentials that you want to look like a city line that's just kind of like or something to look like um, trees in the background if it was green if you lay a line of that down and then lay a line of water next to it see what happens see how it's dragging the water up if the cord wasn't bending you'll see that happen more so you can get more of a wicked effect so that it drags and maybe for you know the northern lights or aurora borealis kind of look you can that that might be what you're looking for um we'll do the same at the top and then wet that and then it should wick in the opposite direction so can you see how you've got special effects without really having to do a lot at all just just even wicking from the the um the color into the into the white area so don't feel you have to color the whole of the card even because it'll create a landscape effect for you without even having to paint trees and and things if you use different colors so we'll pop that to one side then i'm going to show you that was just a really quick 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 um hit but one thing i really want to show you that's amazing with these paints is a background i created earlier um using this set um, as you can see a larger this is the um, exactly what we just did with this smaller one you can see using the um, the uh, directly onto the dry cord but check this out this is so good so I'm just going to take some water and I'm going to drop some water on here now this might be an African sunset and I might want to maybe have put a, a sun a sunrise on there um, so what I could do is take something circular and draw around it with a pencil very light line and then I can actually fall bleach because these paints fall bleach better than I mean I thought I could only do this with inks but check this out that's a special that's so special these are the, these are the things that I want to do with my card making um, I, I've, I've created so many cards that I really love and that get a really good response by using a full bleached technique um, or it could be purples and blues and pinks um, and you know a nighttime scene where you want to create the moonlight on on a lake or whatever and this is gonna this is gonna be fantastic for you look at how well that full bleach is so shall we have a look at some more techniques I've got a, a nice little booklet which I would recommend you do as well keep you make yourself a recipe book so this is my treasured recipe book and what I've got is a tag for each um, for each technique and if you look on the back I've actually written on there the recipe because you when you discover something it really is worth making yourself a recipe with that and then you've got it to refer to now this believe it or not look at the seamless gorgeous gorgeous blend of this this is applied with cut and dry foam i'm giving you sneaky tips now there'll be loads and loads of tutorials for you there'll be so much information that you just and we've only scratched the surface this is applied with cut and dry foam across the surface like an ink how amazing is that little bit of glittering into the mix and that makes that possible You've got the full bleaching. I'm going to go a bit quicker because we've got. I'm not. I don't want to spoil you too soon. Um, full bleaching on the background there. We've got the pastels layered up. So if you put a little large chunky shapes down with the large brush you just saw me use, and um, let it dry, and then go over the top, you can see you get like tone on tone and different effects in there. Fab <gasps> stamps brilliantly. Use it with your cut and dry foam. Apply it on your stamps, and then of course you can wet it and blend it so that you've got. You can make those shapes solid. Uh, this I've created, and if you can see the shine on there, I wait the cameraman gives me a heads up. Right, this was a spray I've created in a spare spray bottle using um, some of the inks, water, and one of the gold, some of the gold in the essentials kit, and put it through a spray bottle. It looks like a specific specialist spray paint. Um, it, this you can pick up the the stuff from your from your mat, the overspill, and then sponge some of the uh, metal over the top. 
another gorgeous effect. You can stamp with the metal paint, either the silver or the gold, and then wash over it for a resist. You can use salt, so just paint it on your salt. You can use cling film, plastic wrap on your paints. Look at that, but with the metallic sheen. Can you see how that looks like a crushed silk? Gorgeous. You can mix it with your gesso. I mentioned making a chalk paint. Mix it with gesso. You get a chalk paint so popular, it literally feels chalky. And you can see that the look there. This is chalk, um, sorry, your gesso background applied roughly with a knife and then painted and then full bleached. So even on top of gesso. This is a full metallic effect with verdigris and rust looking. Just again, another technique will bring to you. Shaving foam, marbling. Another technique, picking up colours and splodging and using splats and dropping colours on with your pipettes. Coat and crystal. Stunning. One of the best mediums. I've been using coat and crystal for a lot of years now, creating that technique. This is probably the best product I've used yet for this because of the intensity of the colour. Um, uh, lapis lazuli for background I created using some of the metallics from the essentials and this very set here, the, the primary set Jade Pewter and that's it for now so keep watching, there's so many more videos and um, as we think of things we'll, we'll share them have fun <laughs>